Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is Monday and we're back with Superfilm Support. Remember, you can go to www.superfilmsupport.com and ask any film questions and I'll answer you with a video. So today we have a question uh, which I thought was quite interesting with um, Michael. And he's asking me about portable large format cameras. And most times when you're talking about large format cameras, you're always thinking of a tripod, a camera with bellows, like the dark cloth that you put over your head and like composition and so on, movements and all this. But large format has been uh, handheld in many, many occasions. If we go back and we rewind a little bit, we go to the Graflex cameras back in the day, press would use four by five uh, images and those flashes that would basically fire out and then you had to change the light bulb or whatever they used to flash. So these cameras either had a rangefinder built in or they didn't have a rangefinder built in, so you had to sort of like scale focus and so on. I would say when you're talking about portable large format cameras, you have to divide them into different uh, types of cameras. First of all, there would be the press cameras or the rangefinder cameras that have a rangefinder, like maybe this Fuji 6 uh, GW680, which you have your you know your patch and your rangefinder, and you have to have cams for the lenses. So when you're focusing, those cams are moving the rangefinder into position. For that, I think the most famous cameras are the Graflex, the Linhof, there's a Vista rangefinder, and I'm probably leaving a couple out there, but people will probably answer in the comments. Those are the most common cameras. Then there's one that is the one that Michael sent me on an email. He saw it on a video, and he said at second 25, he saw this camera. That camera he's showing is a Polaroid 110A or 110B that's being converted to shooting 4x5, in this case, instant film. So these Polaroid 110 cameras were made to shoot uh, peel apart, but roll peel apart. This was the very first iteration of Polaroid film, which there was like a roll and like you had to load the camera and you would like cut it. It was, I've never seen them in action, but they were very, very cool cameras back in the day, but that film is very, very long gone. There's no film out there that I've seen working in years. So what people have done is grab that uh, camera and hacked it to be able to shoot four by five. There's a couple of people that do it professionally and I air quote it because I think they just kind of like buy the lenses, buy the cameras, and then they make them. I'm not saying it's professional like a Linhoff camera that's like a brand. They're these, uh, I would say, a fixer uppers that make these cameras. There's some high end ones and some low end ones, but they're not like a brand that makes the camera from scratch. They're grabbing a camera and a lens and putting them all together and making this Polaroid, uh, you know, rangefinder camera. And the good thing about the 110 from Polaroid is the lenses were off the shelf four by five lenses. So there's no issue with coverage. So some people even make them all the way to cover four by five. In that regard, like I said, rangefinders. There's also Chamonix, uh, the Chinese camera manufacturer, did for a while a conversion of a Polaroid, I think it was 250, and they made it uh, called the Chamonix Sabre. And you could choose and pick the lens and they would make the camera and they were really, really pretty in my opinion. I actually was in the waiting list for one. And these cameras are basically a Polaroid land camera converted to four by five. So there's a couple conversions. So those are the rangefinder style cameras. Then you have TLRs, which are really uber rare. There's a Cambo TLR, and there's a Gowland, Go Goland, uh, Goland Flex, which is like a massive TLR that you look through the top and you have like uh, the lens, uh, the viewing lens and the taking lens, and there's like parallax correction and whatnot. It's a monstrosity and super, super cool. That was even made in four by five, I think even five by seven, and for sure eight by 10, so imagine that. And then we go into what I would consider the more point and shoot sort of style. There's a couple different ones also. There's the Campbell Wide that has movements. So you can like set the camera and it has shift uh, in one direction and you can move the cone and shift to the other and I have a video which I'll link up here. Then you have a camera like the one I have here. This is a Malefic camera which uh, is built uh, to spec. Malefic has stopped building cameras, but someone else bought the brand, so we'll see them coming back soon. And it's basically a 3D printed camera with a helicoid on the front, which you pick the lens and they design it exactly. And it's basically a point and shoot camera. It even has like the cable release here. You kind of like can compose 
and shoot. You can open the lens and compose through the back, but I like to use them handheld. And with this style camera, there's a quite, a, a quite a few of them. There's the global scope that was at least the first one I know of. Then there's the travel wide, which kind of came a couple years ago with a Kickstarter and I love it. I actually have the two of them and shot tons of uh, pictures with it. There's the Camera Dactyl OG, which is still made by Ethan Moses from Camera Dactyl. Super cool, clunky, big camera, colorful if you want it. You can personalize it. Then you have the Will Travel, which is made in Norway, also 3D printed with different nose cones and all these things, which is super cool. And also the Will Travel comes in different sizes. Then uh, we have, let me see, Photoman, which is a Chinese manufacturer that's no longer around that I know of. And they're all metallic and they're pretty cool. They made like 6x12, 6x17, 6x24s, 4x5s, 8x10s, all kinds of cameras. Very, very cool. Even 4x10 if I'm not wrong. And then, like I said, the Malefic. So there's uh, quite a few different portable uh, large format cameras. I do want to note something that I think... Um, like if you've been shooting large format, you'll be uh, accustomed to, but it may be if you're not, is large format has a very small depth of field. So four by five lenses or eight by 10, depth of field at F22 is nothing compared to F22 at 35 mil because 35 is super small frame. Four by five is a big, big frame. So hand holding your shots on large format is very, very complicated to like achieve a sharp negative. Usually you have to stop down the lens. You have to have, if you're using a rangefinder, it has to be very, very well calibrated. If you're shooting sort of point and shoot, use wide angle lenses, stop down as much as you want. And for example, when I was shooting the travel wide, I was shooting with a 90 mil. I was shooting a, a FOMA 400 push to 1600 and stopping the lens usually at F11, F16, uh, sometimes F22. So I would be was playing more with the minimum shutter speed I could shoot and then playing with the aperture instead of the other way around, which is how I usually shoot when I'm shooting other formats. So yeah, possible, yes. Recommendable, yes, but if you know those little issues with focus and depth of field that you might have, but it's super, super fun. And yes, you can remove a large format camera from a tripod and enjoy it handheld. I would recommend Rangefinder if you can find something that works for you but also these point and shoot sort of style are very, very fun and sometimes break the barrier of large format being something you can shoot for fun. I shot 400 shots of the, with the travel wide in a span of like three, four months, which I'm still developing to this day, uh, but it was super cool. Plus I got lots of shots I never envisioned to be shot on four by five by doing that method. So yeah, that was super film support for this week. Do remember this channel works thanks to Patreons and uh, donors. So you feel like that, you can go check the links below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.